Look, I don't believe in any paranormal stuff, and I don't really worship anything. But tonight, I heard something knocking outside my home, very loudly, so my dog heard it too. German Shepherd Husky Mix. I went to check, thinking maybe my stepdad was taking out my other dog, and he got locked out. But nothing was there. This was around 11.30. I live in North Carolina and have neighbours across from me, and to my sides with a pasture of horses to the left, and woods in the back. It's 2015 slash 16, and I'm going out to take my dog out in the back, near the start of my woods. It's snowing now as it's around Christmas time, much like it is today. I'm around 11 or 12 at the time, so when I started to hear wind chimes or music box-like sounds coming from the woods, I panicked a little bit and brought my dog into the house. Later I told my uncle and grandma, who didn't seem to believe me, but at the time, reports of clowns luring kids in the woods started to appear in the news in South Carolina. Yes, this was a real thing and a real panic here. So maybe they would cut me some slack. This wasn't the case, and they didn't seem to believe me. My uncle, however, said there was an old house back there across from our property line, so he said maybe it was them. But it wasn't that kind of music, and he didn't believe me when I said what it sounded like. Fast forward to now. 2021, December 3rd. It's around Christmas time again. I'm now 17. My uncle's recently deceased. I've moved into the house with the woods with my mother and stepdad. However, it's not snowing currently, and I've yet to really go back there, so I've not heard of it again. After hearing something knock and walk around outside, separated in time by maybe an hour, I finally looked up my experience and found that people have similar experiences around the same time. Same sounds and similar settings. If it snows this season, I'm taking my dog out there to see if I hear it again. I've never experienced anything super paranormal other than a few things as a kid. One time when I was six, I was playing on the PS2 before school and my vision flashes bright green which really freaked me out at the time. This hasn't happened since. The other one is that my sister and I were playing in our basement and eventually we went upstairs. When we came back down, the sombrero that we had sitting on the ground had completely flipped over. And when we went to move it, one of her electronic Barbie dolls in a corner of the basement randomly started talking. Another thing I have to mention is that my dad and all of his relatives claim that the house they grew up in is haunted. Their dogs would bark at the ceiling for no reason. His toys would shuffle around as a kid. Everyone he grew up on with could occasionally hear their names called when no one was home. Faucets would randomly turn on, and double doors would randomly swing open. Turns out, previous owners of the house had a four-year-old girl that died by running out into the street in front of the house. Another thing to mention is that when my dad was a child, his great-grandmother told him that he had a guardian angel, and he has had some pretty crazy things happen to him over the years. Due to my dad telling me all of these stories, I've always been extremely fascinated with paranormal things. I could keep mentioning things, but I'm going to explain what has started happening at our house. Anyways, I moved into my basement at the start of 2020, and shit has been happening. The second I finished moving all of my things into the room, I had a really weird gut feeling that I've never had before. Lights have started flickering in my room, and sometimes my room can get extremely cold out of nowhere. I have a laptop in my room that runs really hot, and it's pretty much on all the time, so this shouldn't happen. Plus the furnace is in my room behind a closed door, so this really, really shouldn't happen. Something else started happening like a week ago, where I'll go to open a door, like the bathroom, and when I go to turn the knob, it won't budge as if it's locked. But I'll give it a few minutes, and it opens with zero issues. Another thing, I was home alone with my dogs, both of them were in my sight, and I heard a door slam shut in the basement. Sure enough, our storage room door that is right outside my room that I left open was closed when I went to go check. Here's the kicker. My dad has some sixth sense and he can almost feel like paranormal shit. 
We had family friends years ago and we would go to their house pretty often. At some point, Fawcett started turning on in the middle of the night. Things would move around, doors would lock behind people after entering rooms, etc. Anyways, my mom wanted to do a test because she doesn't believe in anything paranormal. We all went over to their house one day and my mom didn't mention anything to my dad about what's been going on in their house. After being there for 40 minutes, my dad pulled my mom out into the garage and told her he had a really bad feeling about the house and that he wanted to leave. It was late afternoon a couple of days ago and I went to put my two week old baby girl down for a nap in her bedroom. I'd been up all night taking care of her and I'd been doing laundry and other chores all morning so I was pretty tired myself. My husband ran to the store to get some groceries so I decided to take a nap while Natalia was sleeping. I grabbed the baby monitor and went to lay down in our bedroom across the hall. I always make sure I grab the baby monitor when I'm going to lay down since I have two sleeping disorders and I sleep hard, so I don't always hear her cries when she needs something. Anyways, I decided to read a little bit before napping. All of a sudden, I hear a bunch of static coming from the baby monitor. I ignored it and continued reading, figuring as long as my daughter wasn't crying, I could ignore the noise. Amanda, Amanda, I heard a kid's voice quietly say over the baby monitor. I froze. Did I really just hear a child call me over the baby monitor? I instantly felt creeped out and like something or someone was watching me. Scared, I ignored the voice. I heard static again and then the same voice said, come here. Still very creeped out, I went across the hall to my baby's room and saw my sweet girl laying in her bassinet quietly looking at me walk through the door, almost like she was waiting for me to come and get her. Quickly, I grabbed my daughter and left the room. I'm not sure if she was communicating to me through the baby monitor somehow. As I mentioned earlier, I do have two sleep disorders, so I'm not always very good with hearing her cries when I'm sleeping. So I'm not sure if this was a way of her signaling to me that she needed something before I fell asleep. Or if there was something in her room that was communicating to me. I've never felt any malevolent spirits in our home, but I did feel on edge after that experience a couple days ago. Haven't experienced anything since though. I was 18 at the time and had been on a bushwalking road trip with my dad in the New South Wales outback. I was set to meet up with my brother, 21, and a mutual friend in a small rural town to go vermin shooting on a huge outback property. I'd been in the army reserve for more than a year and a member of the scout movement for more than five years. I spent a lot of time and still do hiking and camping solo and really enjoyed the solitude of the Australian bush. I provide this context to highlight that I was very experienced and comfortable with being in remote and desolate locations. So after my dad dropped me off at my friend's place and my brother arrived, we piled into our friend's car and headed into the outback as night fell. After several hours, we arrived at our destination and walked into the dark to hunt with 22s and a 243 and a shotgun. We set up a basic camp before sunrise and slept until about midday, then back out for another night shooting. On the third night, we only stayed out for a few hours. Over the whole two days, we didn't see another soul. I feel this is important to mention because what happened to me next had nothing to do with the remoteness or bush setting. On the last morning after packing up camp, our friend wanted to visit a small town nearby where there was a natural hot spring pool to soak in before the drive home. This sounded like a fantastic idea, so we went. As we drove into the small town, I sensed what I recall as a hissing or buzzing sound that gave me intense goosebumps and shivers. At first, I thought it might have been one of those passing moments that disappears as soon as it starts, but the feeling continued and even intensified. It was a horribly oppressive feeling that I didn't know how to handle. My brother and friend got out and dived into the pool, but I couldn't bring myself to do anything. 
spending the next 20 to 30 minutes feeling like I was about to throw up. And I never throw up. I didn't know how to communicate my feelings to the other two, so I didn't say anything. We jumped back into the car and drove back the way we came and the feeling subsided. It was a little while later that I realised I felt okay and was able to relax a little bit, but I remember feeling confused and feeling weird for the next few hours. I've heard about times where a person or place didn't resonate, and that's exactly what this was. It was more than a feeling of discomfort, more like a feeling of dread and danger, but I was the only one of us who felt it. I spoke to my brother years later about it, and he only vaguely recalled the visit to the town and pool at all, but remembers the camping and hiking part vividly. I've never been back to that small town, but often think about it, and wonder whether it would have been the same effect now. A few days before Christmas, a huge tree of over 100 feet fell on my house due to a fairly heavy rain for Southern California standards. It slightly damaged the roof, but nothing serious and no one was injured. The next morning, the tree trimmers came out to cut the tree into manageable pieces to remove it and left just the stump. Maybe a day later, all of the surrounding ivy, I'd say around three feet around the base of the tree, turned black. The tree is next to a route I walk my dog on every day, where she needs to do her business. The day after the tree was cut down, when we got near the tree, her tail tucked between her legs. She kept looking over her shoulders if something was behind her, and she immediately tried to pull me back to the house. I've never seen her so upset and frightened about anything. Earlier today, I had a friend visit who's leaving for college in a few days, and before I said anything about the tree, and my dog's behaviour, she said, I feel a strange energy behind your house. Something's behind your house. I tell her that my dog has been acting strange near the cut down tree, and she asks to walk with her behind the house, and sure enough, right by the tree, my dog's tail tucks and she starts to whimper. I personally haven't noticed anything odd or out of the ordinary, but the fact that my dog reacts at the same spot each time has me intrigued. Around the beginning of summer, my dad bought and moved into a new house. When we first went in, it seemed like an average house from the 1800s, old and in need of some repairs. But things changed when we went into the basement. The first thing that caught my eye was a blue door with the writing Wolfgang, and a star made out of lines like seen in the Blair Witch Hunt. The room it led to was small. If I stood in the middle, I could touch every wall. But before I investigated that, I went all the way down the stairs and looked to my right, and there was an empty room, except for a moment I saw someone standing and looking at me, almost like a warning. I quickly jumped back, and when I investigated further with my dad, the room's only contents were some pipes. We then went and explored the basement more and found a room that you needed to go around several turns to get to. When I first saw it, I thought it was a normal room, until I turned around. There stood a wall full of names, names that I couldn't read, and two that were crossed out. Actually, while I'm writing this, I heard a crash of some sort from downstairs, but I'm the only one home. It could have just been from the car and trucks outside though. One night, I was just sleeping when the fire alarm went off with no fire in the middle of the night. The thing was though, that just a few minutes before it went off, I woke up. When I was trying to fall back asleep, that's when it went off. I was just relaxing on the couch when I heard a loud beeping. I assumed it was a truck backing up, but after a while it didn't stop. I search around for where it's coming from, but none of the alarms are going off until I open the basement door and it's louder. I text my dad about it and he manages to turn it off remotely. Small incident, once I heard a pencil rolling, but the pencil in my room was completely still. Again, a sound from downstairs. Maybe it's the extremely old heating system. I hope it is. I'll just put on some YouTube. Only two things are left till my story ends. First, the thing that happened last night. I was trying to go to bed when I sat up 
and saw something tall and white slide behind my dresser. I told myself it was the white cord behind the dresser connecting to the TV. But when I checked behind it in the morning, the cord was black and completely still. Finally, my vision. In my peripheral vision, I keep seeing two things. Someone staring at me and cats. I often see someone peeking around corners and looking at me. I also see cats wandering a house with none. One night around two years ago, a friend and I were playing video games in the early morning, something we usually do up until this day. We were chilling, hunting in a video game called The Hunter, Call of the Wild. Anyone familiar with this game knows it's pretty chill and silent up until the point an animal makes a call sign or a mating noise. And in some locations, you can get scared with loud noises from elks. This particular night, it was around four in the morning. We were at the peak of our game when we were playing it every day. We were hunting for deer silently waiting for them to pass by when all of a sudden, I heard a loud scream from a woman in my headphones as if coming from my friend's house. At first, it scared the crap out of me because I wasn't expecting it and immediately asked, is everything okay? He remained silent until I called his name. Then he said, wait, that wasn't you? No, I answered. I thought that was over at your house. He proceeded to describe the exact experience I had to me. For a moment, we remained silent looking at each other inside of the game, but no other noise or anything familiar happened. I asked him about two weeks ago if he was pulling a prank on me, but he denied it. I know my friend very well and he would have said something by now. All of our five person group of friends know about this experience and no one is certain about what could have happened that night. To start, I'm 31, male. This happened over the course of my younger life. From first memories till college at 20. My grandparents lived in a decent sized house in a small town in the mountains of North Carolina. Before his death, they set for a hand painted portrait of both of them. My grandfather wearing a short sleeve blue shirt with his glasses on. The picture hung in their house for decades. Another note. My grandfather died three days before I was born and was buried the day I was born. My parents went to the funeral in the morning and the hospital later that day. Due to this, my middle name is my grandfather's, the one I never met. Now for the strange occurrences. We lived two hours away from my grandmother's house, but visited all the time and basically every holiday. The occurrences started happening not long after I was born and continued for decades, even into college and I assume still does. But my grandmother is 12 years past on and my uncle owns the house now. So to keep things short, many members of my family would see a man with big glasses, a blue shirt, and looked kind of old walking up to the front door. The description was just like my grandfather's picture. Almost everyone on my dad's side of the family has seen the man. He'll walk up the driveway, past the windows in front of the house, and disappeared just before getting to the door. He's also been spotted downstairs, either standing at the bottom of the steps or walking through one of the rooms down there. When the house was empty, while I was in college, I would see him walk into the kitchen. The figure always disappeared upon investigation. It was always brief glimpses of the figure, lasting a few seconds at most. There was no harm coming from it. Nobody was ever frightened by it. The most memorable occurrence was the day my grandmother passed. She was sick and wanted to live in her own house. She passed during the day and for the first time for me, others had seen it happen, I saw the figure walking away from the house into the night. Shortly after graduating high school, I moved in with some friends. They were a newly married couple. Rick, the husband, and I knew each other from having grown up on the same streets. I met Carol, his wife, when they were dating junior year. We were pretty much inseparable for about five years with me being the third wheel. My friends bought an older house in town since they were expecting their first child soon. 
It was a small three bed, one and a half bath with a quaint backyard. I moved into the new house with them as it was a pretty ideal situation since we were all doing our best to cut expenditures and save money. As most friends and roommates do, we talked about all kinds of things. We talked about movies, food, people we knew, and likes and dislikes. Carol mentioned during one of these conversations that one of her dislikes was taking baths. She said she never felt the same level of cleanliness that one would get from a shower. I agreed. However, two nights later, something happened that made me question her aversion to baths. It was just about dawn when I woke up, needing to use the bathroom. It generally takes an act of God to get me up from bed if I have to pee. I can usually hold it for hours, even while sleeping, because I don't want to get up. The stay was different, however, and the urge was undeniable. I proceeded to get up and walk to the shared main bathroom. The bathroom door was adjacent to my room. As I opened the door, I saw the shower curtain on the tub had been pulled back about halfway, and that Carol was taking a bath. I also heard the water running. Her head and face were facing towards me, which seemed odd to me at that moment. That would mean she would have had her head resting against the faucet. Unless she was rinsing her hair, that would be an awkward place to rest your head. I hurriedly excused myself with an apology, stating I didn't know the bathroom was already occupied. I went back to my bed and sat for about 7 to 10 minutes, waiting for her to exit the bathroom. I wouldn't use the half bath located adjoining the master bedroom because that would be awkward and potentially wake up Rick. After waiting for what seemed like an eternity and still not having heard Carol come out of the bathroom, I decided to just go out in the backyard to relieve myself. The sunrise was probably just coming over the horizon at the time. It was pretty safe to assume that no neighbours were going to see me. I finished up and went back to bed for another hour. After I woke up, I went to the kitchen and saw Carol in there. Rick had already left for work. She was wearing a bathrobe and cooking breakfast. After morning pleasantries, I jokingly said to her, You got up pretty early this morning. And for not being much of a bath person, you sure took a long one this morning. She looked at me confused and replied, What do you mean? I responded, Sorry I interrupted your bath this morning. I didn't mean to. I waited a while for you to get out. But then I just couldn't hold it any longer and went out back. I didn't want to wake Rick up. She just stared back at me, even more bewildered. I assured her that I didn't see her naked and that I only saw her face and hair above the water and that the shower curtain had covered up the rest of her. I also told her that it must have been uncomfortable with her head resting against the faucet. She finally cracked a smile and said, Come on, you're joking. I just got up. I haven't even showered yet. That's when I noticed that her hair was dry, and she even had a bit of bedhead. After a few minutes of back and forth of her insisting I was joking, and me telling her I absolutely wasn't, we were both a bit speechless. Carol called Rick at work and confirmed it wasn't him taking a bath that morning either. I'm pretty much a skeptic when it comes to the supernatural and the paranormal, even though I like reading the stories and watching movies about those subjects. Carol was and still is, pretty leery of those topics and doesn't like to discuss them as they creep her out even now. I lived in a suite which entailed a shared bathroom between two rooms, which housed four people in total. My roommates and I have all experienced strange things in both of our rooms but most of the weird stuff happened in or near the bathroom. Whoever designed the bathroom for some reason thought it was a good idea to put a motion sensor instead of a light switch in there. This would turn off every eight minutes on the dot, so showering often ended in the dark. It started really casually halfway through my first semester. The bathroom light would turn on by itself, only at night, while nobody was even awake. Besides myself, of course. I only eventually figured this out when the light turned itself on three times in a row, 24 minutes in total, prompting me to check on whoever was in there. It was nobody. Not long after this, it began happening more frequently, earlier and earlier each day, until it randomly did it at any given time. We all made light of it and began addressing our entity as Casper. 
we like to joke and talk with Casper, asking him if he'd like to uh, enjoy beverage with, with us from time to time. Second semester rolled around and lights continued to wig out every now and then. They eventually burned out. Oddly enough, the serviceman mentioned how it was funny that he was replacing those bulbs already because he specifically remembered doing so before the start of the school year. This struck a chord with me and my roommates, but only made us interact with Casper more. We even went as far as setting up a seat for him at the poker table. Eventually, Casper decided he had a taste for coffee, and every two to five days, around 2.30 to 3pm, my coffee maker would turn itself on and begin heating up, which was very odd since no one really ever used it anyway. But this still wasn't the holy shit moment for me. I was alone in the dorm, completely. No roommates or sweet mates to be seen or heard from, and I'm sitting in my bed scrolling. Out of nowhere, I heard a loud, distinct clatter from my bathroom. I knew instantly what it was. My roommates and I had purchased a large trash bin with a lock on lid that we cut a hole in for bottles and cans. We kept it in the bathroom. Sure enough, when I walked in and the lights turn on, the lid of the bin is set perfectly in front of the can on its top. I was dumbfounded. The skeptic in me quickly set out to rationalize this and I placed the lid back on to see how easy it was to knock off. I could lift the whole bin over my head holding just the lid so it didn't just fall off. Then I try setting it on top in case a roommate gets lazy. I probably knocked the lid off the top two dozen times but never once did it land or even sound remotely like it had. There was no bounce when I heard it. Then I tried what I was hoping I wouldn't have to. I took the lid and dropped it about a foot off the ground in front of the three foot bin. It landed and sounded exactly like it had when I originally heard it. I didn't stick around for another minute after that and went to the library until a roommate was there. Yes, I was willing to sacrifice them. Nothing that crazy ever escalated that much again, though the bathroom lights still turned on. My coffee maker started up much less frequently. I'm still a bit of a skeptic, but this was surely enough to get me thinking otherwise. I once worked away in Cheshire, England. Had to stay at a hotel for the night with a couple of work colleagues. This place was called Crabwall Manor and apparently dates back to the 1600s, although I didn't know this prior. And we actually liked the space for its size and location. It was quite cheap considering the size of the place and the pictures looked great, so we booked straight away. Everything was normal until the night, where I kept feeling a tapping on my back as I turned on my left side. My workmate was in a separate bed a few feet away from me and I thought he was messing around. I turned around but he was asleep. I thought nothing of it then tried to get back to sleep when I felt another tap only a couple minutes later and I quickly turned around again saying what but again he was asleep. I got kind of freaked out knowing that he wasn't able to tap me and return to a still position without me noticing. I lay still hoping that it would happen again for me to catch him. But when I felt the blanket start to tap against my back, I turned around almost instantly, only to see him fast asleep. And I said even louder, what? But he didn't budge. In fact, he didn't move from the position he was last in when I turned around previously. I got a bit freaked out by this, but the tapping stopped and eventually I drifted off to sleep. All I could remember from what happened next was that I felt like somebody was around me and wouldn't let me out of their sight. And as much as I wanted to be released, I couldn't. I remember a great feeling of distress and I woke up sweating and panicked. When it was finally time to get up for work, the tap slash faucet in the bathroom turned slightly and released a small amount of water and the door ajar, which it wasn't before we went to bed. I don't know if this was a paranormal experience but after reading up on some of the history of Crab War Manor and learning about other disturbances, I think it should be looked into. I used to live alone in Bhopal, India, as my parents were in Delhi. I was doing my bachelor's. 
I was really curious about paranormal and ghostly stuff. For that me and one of my friends who used to live across my flat used to go out on my motorcycle at night around 12 a.m. or something to try and experience something paranormal. It had been more than a week or so that we didn't experience anything. However, it changed soon. One of the nights we got out around 1 to 1.30 a.m. And as usual, I was driving my motorcycle and my friend was sitting behind me. The road which I was driving on was desolate and was on the boundary of the lake and had fencing all along it. On the right side of the road, there was a pond and two to 300 meters down the road, there was a right turn. It was a chilly night and there was fog all around us. However, there was a patch of around 100 to 150 meters, which didn't have any of it. At the end of the patch, there was a tree on the right side of the road next to the pond. It was clearly visible as there was no fog in that particular patch. Halfway through the patch, I saw someone sitting on one of the branches of the tree and stopped my bike. I was terrified and told my friend to see it. As soon as I said it, someone jumped on the road. It had long hair and was wearing some dirty white clothes. It jumped on the road and started running towards the lake, which had a fence all around. It went through the fence. We could only hear the sound of the water splashing. I drove my motorcycle at full speed and recited prayers. When we crossed the place where it had jumped into the lake, we could see that it was properly fenced without any gaps, which were big enough from which a person could pass through. I asked my friend whether he saw what I saw. He only said he saw someone jump and could only hear the water splashing. From that day onwards, we stopped going on such rides. I believe we saw a witch. I live in Savannah, which is known for being a fairly haunted city. My home is a split level built in 1900 and I live with two roommates and a cat on the top level. I moved in a bit over a year ago in January 2020 and things have been completely normal up until the past couple of weeks to a month. The first thing I noticed was open cabinets in the kitchen almost on a daily basis. Like I'll go in to grab a drink of water and five different cabinets will be wide open. I'll shut them and they'll be open again later in the day. I've lived with the same two roommates since last May and have just recently started having this problem. When I asked my roommates about it, they sort of brushed it off like, yeah, I guess I could have left it open, my bad. But I found it weird that this would be a new habit. Relatively innocent, but on top of everything else, it starts to add up. Then our cat started acting just weird. I don't know how to describe it exactly. She's just been very on edge and seemingly nervous. She frequently mouths at nothing when she used to be basically silent. She's very skittish and often runs away from me when I enter a room, when she used to be super affectionate and would climb up on me or purr and rub against my legs to greet me. She acts spooked by things I can't see and pounces on nothing. Maybe a bug problem, if I had to guess it's a reasonable explanation. Again, easy to brush off. Cats can be pretty weird after all, but it's so noticeably different from how she acted before. My roommate agrees and pointed it out independently of me. This is a small one, but around the same time, my lamp in my room started turning off and on on its own. I've replaced the light bulb and have tried different outlets and it always happens. It's touch activated. I'm sure there's some electrical or mechanical explanation, but thought I'd add it just to cover all my bases. Then things started getting weirder. A few days ago, my one roommate and I were chilling on the couch and I forgot how we got to the topic of conversation, but I brought up that I had had a nightmare the previous night. I couldn't really remember any details of it, besides that I had been in my room in the dream as well. But I woke up with such a deep feeling of dread that I actually prayed, despite having zero religious inclinations. 
When I admitted this, my roommate's eyes went wide and she told me she had the same experience on the same night. Like, what? Tonight freaked me out most and is what led me to posting this. I was hanging out with my roommate again and as soon as she said goodnight and turned in for the night, I heard a fairly loud noise from the downstairs foyer area. Our front door is the only thing down there, aside from some old furniture we store under the staircase. It was probably just something placed precariously falling over, or the house settling or something like that, but it freaked me out enough that I went into my room and locked the door. As I was standing there deciding what to do, my door handle jiggled back and forth, as if someone was trying to come into my room. I froze and texted my roommates, my other roommate is out for the night, asking if she had tried to come in. She said no, and that it was probably the cat messing around. My brain went to intruder, so after silently freaking out and debating calling 911 for a few seconds, I got my mace and went out to check the house. Everything seems fine, but I swear someone tried to open my door. I know what it looks and sounds like when someone tries to open a locked door. It was summertime, so that meant that my dad would take me and my sister into town to go hang out and swim at the river with our friends. We did this basically every day in the summer, and summer came with last minute plans. And on this particular day, my sister got invited to have a sleepover at her friend's house, which my parents agreed to. With that being said, I thought it was only fair that if my sister got to have a sleepover, that I could. I remember wearily calling my mom and asking because she wasn't the biggest fan of people coming over to the house at the last minute, but she agreed. My friend and I were so excited that as soon as we got to my house, we immediately went up to my bedroom to start getting the room ready while my parents were making dinner. That's when we saw it. My friend and I turned around to see a stranger in my doorway. This wasn't just scary because there was a stranger in my house, but it was even more scary because of his demeanor. He was dressed in a white wife beater tank top and baggy jeans that didn't fit. He hadn't shaved, had yellow teeth, a scary smile and greasy hair. He's what I would call the epitome of white trash. Obviously, since he was a stranger in my house, I screamed and so did my friend. When we screamed, this man just laughed and turned around and walked away. I followed him. He walked down the hallway and he turned to the corner, which led right towards the kitchen where my parents were cooking dinner. I turned to the corner just a moment after him and he was gone. I was met by my parents asking why they were screaming. I explained to them everything and they saw how terrified we were that my dad went to check the house. This is so strange to everyone because of so many reasons. One, there was nowhere this man could have gotten between me and my parents to get out of the house. Two, I have very protective dogs. They didn't even sense that someone was in the house. Three, my dad checked the whole house and even the perimeter of the outside. There was no trace of anything. I still don't know what I would call this other than unexplainable. I think it was probably a spirit, but I really have no idea. I do know that everyone still remembers it. A few years ago, my family took my then boyfriend to the Mountery in New Orleans to do an escape room for his birthday. I've always been sensitive to spirits and was nervous about going since the mortuary used to be a morgue and is surrounded by cemeteries. Because I love creepy shit, I went anyway. To my surprise, I didn't pick up on any weird feelings while I was there and it was a lot of fun. After returning home, things got weird. I began to feel like someone was watching me when I was home. Once, I was taking a bath and pulled up my front camera on my phone and I swore I saw something behind me run out of view. I turned around instantly, but nothing was there. Another night, I woke up because I was hearing music playing 
but couldn't figure out where it was coming from. The weirdest thing that occurred still has me shaken up. One night, at around 2 or 3 a.m., I shot up straight in bed out of a dead sleep, feeling extremely anxious. I couldn't remember if I had a nightmare or not, or why I woke up. Suddenly, I heard three loud bangs on our front door. My first thought was that someone was breaking in. We lived in the hood at the time and it wasn't uncommon. I ran to the front door and the porch light was on. I walked up to the glass to peer out but saw no one. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I felt like someone was behind me. I turned around to find no one there. I was so creeped out that I texted my divorced estranged parents in a group chat, begging them to come over. I ended up making my roommate let me sleep in her room. A few weeks later, my aunt unexpectedly passed from suicide. Whether the knocks and her death coincide, I guess I'll never know, but I do wonder. A few years back, I was working as a music teacher at a primary school in Manchester. The building was quite old and I had been told it was used as a hospital during World War II, but how true this is, I'm not sure. I've always believed in the paranormal after witnessing many things growing up in my parents' house. Because I live quite a distance from the school, to avoid traffic, I would leave for work at 5.45am, I'd be in work for half six. But if I'd left 15 minutes later, I'd be stuck on the motorway for two hours. It was crazy. But I got my preparation done before most teachers got in and I could relax. I was the first person apart from the cleaners in the school and it was usually dark in the morning, but I never felt or sensed anything or felt scared. My music equipment room was downstairs in the basements and here I'd have to go down two flights of stairs and switch the lights on as it was pitch black. You went down the stairs and at the bottom there was an old toilet room immediately at the bottom to the left. This was mostly used for storage. The only other way to go was down a small corridor to the right. Halfway down was my room and at the end was the art storeroom. In the mornings, sometimes I'd go down to my room and play drums before getting my equipment for the first lesson. I never heard or saw anything during that time. One lunchtime I was in the music room and needed the toilet, so I went to use the one in the basement that was used for storage. As I was flushing the toilet, I heard high heeled shoes walking down the stairs. I was washing my hands and popped my head out to check who it was and clearly saw a woman with her hair in a bun. A two piece tweed type jacket and skirt walking towards my room. I dried my hands and went to see what the person who I was sure with how she was dressed was the deputy head wanted me for. I walked into my room expecting to see her but Nobody was there. I thought she must have gone to the art room, so I walked a short distance and opened the door. Again, nobody was there. There was one way in and out of the basement and nobody came back past me. I must admit, I was a little bit scared. I checked again, but nobody was there. I went upstairs and that's where the deputy head's office was. I popped my head in and asked her if she had been down to the basement. But she hadn't. She clearly wasn't wearing tweed or having her hair in a bun. I went to the staff room and said to a colleague and friend that I thought I'd seen a ghost. I described what I'd seen and she told me to go and tell a specific member of staff. I went and told this teacher that I thought I'd seen a ghost. He immediately asked if she was wearing a two-piece tweed jacket and skirt and had her hair up in a bun. I was shocked. He told me he had seen her in the second floor hall outside of his classroom on a few occasions when he was working late. I was told that the caretaker and some cleaners had seen her as well. Safe to say, it took a while for me to venture down to the basement first thing in the morning to play drums for some time. I've had many other experiences at my parents and friends houses, but this is the only actual full apparition I've seen to date. I'm not sure when they started, 
But the oldest story I heard was about a month ago. One of the keepers was in the morning replacing the feeding stations for the birds. He said he started hearing something strange. It sounded like some kind of socializing, but none he had ever heard. He's worked there for ages and basically raised some of these birds. He knows them well. It's kind of scary how accurate he can be. He was able to determine the calls were coming from on top of an artificial rock thing, where he hid some equipment and controls for the building. None of the birds go up there because they're afraid of the motor for the waterfall. Unsurprisingly, when he went up there, he found nothing. Multiple of the night guards have heard things in there, and two have seen very tall figures standing up in this area. One guard said he was sitting outside and heard the sounds. He went in worried one of the birds was hurt, because it sounded really strange. Going in, he was excited about this artificial cave we have that's under the rock thing, and he can hear light steps on top. He slowly steps out with his taser, and looking up, there, he says he saw a figure maybe eight feet tall, humanoid, and starting to put over the aviary, looking around with a hunched posture. He said he didn't see him, but he called the cops. They searched the building from the whole zoo and nothing. The second guard had a similar experience, but the thing did seem to see them. But there were also two this time. Apparently, they threw something like a rock at her, but she couldn't find what they tossed at her. Unfortunately, and much to many of the staff's frustration for other reasons besides paranormal, the zoo has yet to set up any cameras in the building. But one of the cameras that are outside has picked up the sound once when it was particularly loud. Unfortunately, I'm just an admission staff, so I don't have access to those cameras. But as we move into the off season, the encounters have become so common, the administration is taking notice. Our own CEO heard it. Recently, there have been several items thrown at staff and guests. A bird was found dead like something squeezed to death. It was horrible, especially since the bird was such a sweet and well-known little fellow and made lots of sounds. I know there are more, but to include all the stories would take forever. I have two experiences. My first was pretty basic, as I heard the vocalization. It was really strange and very loud. The scariest part was how all the birds went dead silent and the growled birds all went and hid. They aren't afraid of loud sounds normally, so that kind of freaked me out. The next was more interesting. I was walking through early in the morning and I got to the enclosure where we hold the iguana. Our iguana is pretty old and a pretty chill animal who has been at the zoo his whole life. He is such a sweet little animal and I love him to death. His enclosure is pretty open and this, the only separation is the sturdy net over some bars that keeps the birds from picking on him mostly. I walk over and the section of the net that is against the rock thing is being stretched up and onto it into the foliage, like someone was trying to rip off the top. I can't see what's pulling it and when I holler asking who is up there, it springs back and there's no sound. I radio security and wait. There's no way off that it wouldn't be able to see who was up there if they tried getting down or in the unlikely event up. Security arrives and they look around at nothing. We check on the iguana and he's a bit stressed but seems no worse for wear. Incidents are still going on as I speak. Today, I walked through and heard a call. I actually had to stop writing this because something just shoved a metal shelf off the top of there. So definitely something happening in there. And something very active. I don't know what else to say. I want to say it's a poltergeist, but it's so vocal and active. And the shadowy figures have been seen multiple times. So I'm wondering if it's very active shadow figures. This story was often told by my nanny, my mother's mother, and I think the story was passed on to her by generations, 
spoilers, it might get long and my apologies for my English, as it's a third language. Let's begin. This story belongs to the medieval times, when there used to be kingdoms in India. There were infamous gangs of thugs, also known as dacoits and or bandits. They used to rob innocent travellers on isolated roads, many times often killing them. The kingdom of Marathas, now known as Maharashtra, state of India, were frustrated by one of such notorious gang of dacoits consisting of five to six members and had a bounty on them. So this dacoits had a big loot one day and decided to take a refugee in an old house called the Wada, an old house structure mainly popular in Maratha community, and split the loot. The Wada was situated slightly out of an abandoned village in the middle of the jungle, and the area was avoided by other nearby villagers due to the haunting story. A perfect hideout for the dacoits to pass the night, but it was not just an ordinary night. It was Amavesia, a new moon night. It is said in India the most of the paranormal activities enhances on this day. On top of that, it was raining. All in all, a deep, dark night. The dacoits were happy and celebrating their victory. Some of them were even drinking in one of the inner rooms of the Wada, with one single oil lamp for light. As the night was slowly passing by, during their conversations and laughing and arguments, some of them started hearing a very low and strange voice of a lady singing. The song was something of a lorry, kind of an Indian lullaby which mother sings. But they ignored it, as they first thought they were just hallucinating due to alcohol, or it was just the raindrops or simply night creatures making weird noises. So they continued their talking. But after a while, the voice of the song became prominent. Even the one who didn't drink started hearing the voice. So two of them went to check the house with a hunch of someone might be spying on them. But they found nothing. At last, all of them came to a conclusion that they're just hallucinating and started their little party again. The celebration slowly started to grow into an argument as to who will keep what. The greed started playing its part. The argument started to turn into conflict and the voices of them arguing started to break the early deep silent night. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a loud noise of a small baby crying came from a deep dark room around the corner. All the dacoits who almost drew their weapons to fight froze. All of them started looking at each other, shaking with fear. And one of the gang members indicated their leader with his eyes of what to do. The leader, the man in his 50s, a hardcore criminal with nothing to fear attitude, not knowing of the situation he was facing, snapped out of it and shouted angrily, who's there? Come out or we'll come over there and kill you and drink your blood. For a moment, all the dacoits holding their weapons, staring hard to see if they can find someone in that room. They got some courage because of their leader's words. The two of them who checked the wadder earlier and who happened to miss out that one single room, looked at each other and decided to check the room for which the, the voice came. But as soon as they took one or two steps towards it, the cry of a little child started again. This time more prominent and striking and all of a sudden, an angry loud voice of a lady came from that room. How dare you wake my child up? Don't you see my child is trying to sleep? Get out of my water. It was at this moment, all of them realized they've been disturbed something more sinister, something which they cannot kill with their mere weapons. All of them went into flight mode and started running in whichever directions they could. One of them died on the spot due to the shock. All of them started shouting loudly in panic, help, Mother Kali, Indian goddess, help, help us. The cry was the same as their victims were during the loots as if karma came to bite them back. All of them running into different directions due to panic and lost their way to exit the wadder. With no lamps to navigate or any source of light whatsoever, a simple big old rusty house became a maze for them. But somehow they managed to escape. One of them who knew the nearby village somehow managed to reach there. Coincidentally, a unit of soldiers who were tracking the dacoits were in the same village 
They caught him immediately, or rather this terrified thug who was wounded all over, due to cuts and bruises because of running into the jungle crazily. Surrounded immediately, shaking with fear, the Dakoi told all the incident to the soldiers. Even though it was a good opportunity for the soldiers to track and catch them all by the night, they decided not to do so as they were scared too. No one had the courage to go to that wada, so they decided to visit it when the sun rises. The villagers who were listening to the Dakoids started chanting mantras and praying to the gods. One of the elderly who knew better then told the reason behind the voices in the wada. Long time ago, there lived a rich Savkar, a rich landlord, in what now abandoned village. The Savkar being a middle-aged man married with kids, started an affair with a poor young girl and made her his Rachel, mistress. He kept her in that wada, which was slightly out of the village. But the girl wanted to have a family with the man and hide the truth about her pregnancy. When the Savkar found out, he panicked. And it would be against the society. Still, the girl insisted that they let the child born secretly. But soon enough, this secret was disclosed and Savkar's family came to know about the truth. It was said that the girl was killed in that very house along with the young born infant and the bodies never to be found. A strange disease soon followed after the disappearance of that mistress, killing many children. People thought that it was the curse of that woman and tried each and every puja, godly prayers, to remove it. But it came to be of no use. People started leaving the village. It said, that the Savkar got robbed of all his wealth. His family left him and he died a horrible death too. The sun soon arose and the soldiers along with the Dakoit and a few of the villagers and a Pujari priest went to the Wada. To their amazement, all the loot was still there along with a dead body with a horrifying look in its eyes. The Dakoit immediately identify him as their leader. The soldier quickly recovered the loot and the body and got out of there. It's said that all the Dakoites got caught after a while and they all shared the same story of the incident and thus a strange justice was served. I think the Dakoites and the landlord got what they deserved. I'm sorry that I don't have any actual evidence of whether this story actually happened or not and if the story is too dark for the readers. As I mentioned earlier, this is a kind of folk tale passed on through generations. But I do trust my nanny. She surely kept me up all night scared with this story when I was a kid. I moved out to a new place in the same town about two years ago. It's a house that's about 50 or so years old and I rebuilt some parts to make it more modern. The previous owners are still alive so never went through the process of asking for the deed. It's a one floor house, so you can hear pretty much everything from any point of the house, as long as it's mildly loud. There's one catch though. It's in the outskirts and the local graveyard. It's like 300 meters in a straight line from this house with a full view of it all the time, but we're not bothered by it. A few months back, I started seeing shadows on corners. Nothing too worrisome, since I've always seen those, so just put it aside. After this, my mum and I started hearing sounds from the attic. It's just a small space where all the cables, water heater and AC main installations are. But we blamed it on some rats or bats, since it wouldn't be the first time we found one there. Then it started to go a little more. I was on my PC with my dog sleeping on my bed and my mum watching TV in the living room. Suddenly, I hear a couple of knocks on the front door, and so does my dog because she starts to bark and we both head out. Note that she is a German Shepherd, so it's quite loud. We both head out just to find my mom casually on the couch, surprised, since she didn't hear anything. That scared me a bit since I was playing with headphones and heard it clear as day. Plus, I couldn't be imagining things since my dog heard it as well. 
For the next three separate days, I was alone at home. Two of them, my dog was inside. The first one, she was sleeping in my bed again when I heard some screech coming from inside the house. I panicked, quickly got up and ran to the living room with all the lights on and the fireplace. The second one, my dog was on the living room on her own bed. When I heard it again, but this time instead of being more primitive, it kind of seemed that it tried to say my name, which made me freak out totally. To the point where I started talking back out loud, saying stuff like, come face to face, I know you're here, but with no response. The last time, it was just again the more primitive one, but I didn't react. Neither of the three times my dog heard anything, or at least she didn't react. The last one was this last week. A similar scenario as the first knock, but I was on the couch, my mom on her PC working and my dog outside. We both heard a loud and what seemed a malicious bang on the door. Picture yourself as if someone angrily banging on your door, but it was just one time. Mom comes out of the room and stares at me, and I proceed to go out to check. But as you can expect, nothing, and my dog is sleeping at her house. We didn't consider doing any cleaning nor calling the priest, since nothing bad has happened. We both believe that there was something else, but we're not Catholics. I don't know if it may be one or some spirits that come to visit us, since again, we live pretty close to the graveyard and before us, the house was inhabited for some years. What worries me is the fact that it may have followed me from the last home and it's attached to me since it said my name once. And to my knowledge, nothing happened there when I'm not home. This happened when I was about 12 years old and back in my home country, Guyana. It wasn't uncommon at the time for small impoverished villages to be held up by gangs or bandits for money, resources and gold. With that said, my village was closer to the outskirts of Georgetown and therefore easier to ransack. Things quickly got out of hand because our village leaders wouldn't give anything up without a fight, which caused the gang to start shooting up the village specifically going for the village leaders. There was a lot of collateral damage and many innocent people lost their lives that day and I could have been one of them. After hearing the first couple shots from outside, my family and I decided to flee, but we got split up due to all the commotion and craziness of hundreds of people trying to escape into the jungle. I found myself all alone running for my life with a group of adults, one of which happened to be the leader that initiated the argument with the bandits. Naturally, the bandits started shooting in our direction and I watched as people started to drop on either side of me. To give you some context, I had chronic asthma as a child and this was the longest I had ever run at full speed. At the time, I believed that my will to live is what kept me running, but that changed when I noticed the sun was becoming abnormally bright to the point I had almost zero visibility. I started to panic because I thought that my body was going to give out on me. All of a sudden, that bright light concentrated into a single form next to me. And when I looked next to me, I saw a man running at my side, but it looked like his legs were going extremely fast in comparison to my speed, to the point that he was creating an after image with each stride. He looks at me and smiles, then clear as day I can hear him say, just keep running. We're almost there and you're doing great. The man was wearing a golden half helmet and metal material boots that went up to his knees, along with a white and gold leather vest, and he had an intense glow. I felt so powerful and safe in that moment because he emanated common confidence. I then heard a shot very close behind me, so he gently pushed my arm. When I blacked out and woke up in Georgetown General Hospital, Everyone kept asking me how I got all the way from my village to the hospital on my own. I had no logical answer. When we moved to the States and I started going to high school, I took up a special interest in mythology, especially Greek and Norse mythology. When I read about Hermes and saw depictions of him in books, I immediately thought that they look extremely similar in terms of description. 
It absolutely gave me chills, and I've been thinking about it for years. Especially because I want to represent my Guyana in the Olympics for track. If it wasn't Hermes that helped me that day, what other deity or person could it have been?